The changes continue for yet another day. The models have doubled down, rewriting the pattern from January 1st and beyond. We're gonna track how the pattern has quickly evolved by comparing each model run. The timing and intensity of these storms and temperature patterns have been completely scrambled. So today, I'd like to break down how this pattern will impact your winter weather moving forward. So we're looking at a very interesting graphic here, which is the European Ensemble model from January 6th through January 13th. And it's not changing by time of the projection, it's actually changing by model run. So we can see how this has trended warmer and warmer and warmer, going from a cold pattern straight to a torch pattern in the east within four model runs. And remember, there's two a day, so this is 48 hours of model runs right here that we're looking at. And also take note of the west, how they've gone from a warmer pattern expected all the way to a colder pattern expected. It's absolutely mind-boggling. And I'm not going to spend as much time today complaining about it. I know I had a pretty negative perception of these changes and it does suck. I'm not going to lie, but we're going to just break down what to expect and where to go from here. And something I'm taking note of is what's funny is actually the Arctic and what we would call the NAO territory, which is going to be Greenland, Iceland, and kind of this North Atlantic area. And then again, here's the Arctic. I'll put a plus symbol up there. These have all gotten way, way more favorable as warmer air is pushing northward into these regions. That is actually a favorable look for cold and snow. What has gotten significantly less favorable is this western area look. And this has gone from a positive PNA look to a negative PNA look, which is unideal for cold and snow in the east. This is a really bad look and probably has a lot to do with why we're seeing a free flow of not Arctic air, but actually more tropical humid air. So it's just unideal for cold and snow. Uh, and here is uh, the ensemble extended. This is for the 12th through the 19th. And I want to urge you, we just had this massive change on the models for a projection within a time period that was closer than this. But I'm showing you this just to show that these models haven't switched to a torch from January 1st straight through the end of January. And actually the trend that I'm seeing on the models as of now is a colder look for after this warm period. Take that as you will. I am not completely bought into this at all, but this is our current projection. And we're also gonna kind of track the models perception of this time period moving forward as well. I wanna see how this evolves. It's gonna be interesting to watch. There is, a possibility, again, the Arctic is getting more and more and more favorable, that this does end up being something that we see. Perhaps our cooldown has just been kind of kicked further down the road, but typically when the models are kicking a big change further down the road, that is not a very strong signal. That is a very weak signal, and we've seen that in years past, and it just keeps kicking, keeps kicking until it just doesn't happen. So that doesn't happen every time, but that does happen a lot of the time. So I'm just kind of breaking down my experience with these types of things. For you guys very interesting to see this though to say the least and then here is the last three runs of the gfs ensemble model for the same time period 6 through the 13th so this isn't that extended look this is the same one we looked at at the beginning and it hasn't gone from a super cold to super warm pattern uh, but it is getting progressively warmer model run by model run so a lot of you and even me had a little bit of hope, like 5% hope that somehow this would turn around very quickly and go back to what it was showing, but it's actually just continuing to worsen uh, every single model run. As of now, I've seen things like this, you know, wobble back and forth with what they're thinking, uh, but as of now, we are headed in the wrong direction for cold and snow, not the right direction. Now, with all that being said, let's just take a look at this European model run and see what we do get, because we actually do get a sneaky successful call here from direct weather in this pattern despite this massive catastrophic failure from the models and from my perception of them uh, for that 6th through 13th time period like we talked about where we expected just back-to-back -back arctic blasts nor'easter pattern that has just been completely rug pulled from all of us but there was a sneaky success in there and we're going to skip right to it first off I guess I should note that we do get this clipper moving down from into the Midwest, Great Lakes, and then Mid-Atlantic, and this has trended heavier. I did get a comment yesterday that was like, how does the end of December look, like the next two or three days? 
that still looks cold. Not brutally cold, but it is quite cold, and we do get this snow event here. That would be truly shocking if we saw the models change what they're thinking for tomorrow and the next day, but we do expect colder in the east, warmer in the west for a little bit here. Now, the sneaky success comes from this system here. You might have heard us a couple of days ago, maybe a few days ago, talking about how we're kind of watching for a potential southern slider if this cold connected more, or perhaps if that low moved further north into the cold. And we actually do get a glimmer of that right here, uh, where the low is further north. The cold is not further south, but the low does want to sort of turn northward. And as of now, this isn't a huge success, massive snowstorm or anything, but it is interesting that it has moved more in that direction that we had mentioned. Um, a little bit of wintry weather. This would not be significant, like I mentioned. This would be likely in the form of some snow showers. Maybe if this continued to trend in that direction, maybe it could be somehow a one to three inch snowfall event, but not looking like a major event, but it has been cool to see something go right. Now, as we move forward from that point, this is where the big changes come. A big ridge wants to build in the east here uh, by the 6th, 7th, which is just so ironic considering this was actually a signal time frame for massive cold in nor'easters. So this is night and day difference. And we see a storm system move through similar areas. I guess loosely you could say that, but if you consider this a similar area to this then i guess they are similar but that is a massive shift in what we're expecting and this ends up being a canadian snowstorm with maybe a little bit of high elevation activity in the northeast but regardless nothing huge and then there's our cool down you can see this has uh completely been obliterated um this was originally expected to be a deep diving trough clearly a much different picture being painted now as we continue to move past that point we do reach this period of kind of slowness until we get this stronger low built across um, perhaps Minnesota there. This is 10 days out. The models have shifted what they're thinking for four or five days out. So please take this with a grain of salt. But if we continue to see the bridge, we could get more severe weather concerns and thunderstorm concerns underneath. Obviously, the more warm, humid air is going to support stuff like that, especially when we have a trough in the west because... You get this kind of lift with the low. It's traveling through the south and intensifying and then moving northward. And a lot of times you can get a lot of activity underneath all of that. So we're going to be watching for stuff like this. Again, it's still very far out, but that does seem feasible to me. We do get a cool down for the 11th, 12th, but again, it's not a deep diving trough. It's more like a, a transient cold front. And what I mean by that is we're not seeing Arctic air dive down. We're really seeing Arctic air that is a while ago, days ago, basically taking a deep dive into the west and then it's basically moving from west to east which you can tell i'm trying to think of a good a good analogy for this but we're not getting it straight from the source the most potent source uh this cold air has been altered it's mixed with the more warm air in the southwest it's been diluted down and overall going to be less intense but this can bring some pretty intense cold air not not severe but it is going to be a pretty big difference and along these boundaries oftentimes we're watching for severe weather as well very rich warm humid air being slammed by much much colder air does lead to that type of instability also along that frontal boundary in the winter time we oftentimes have more shear and we like to watch out for damaging wind and tornadoes a little bit more this time of year when you do have a good setup. Um, just more shear does tend to lead to those types of impacts a lot more. We do see that hit the East Coast, uh, that cold front, and then it moves out. And we're a little bit colder, but it's it's not a torch here, but it's definitely not a Arctic pattern. And then to make matters even worse, again, it's the long range, so it's not terrible. This can definitely change a lot, but we do see a Southeast Ridge type pattern, which I know you guys hate. We see this high right here, which is really helping to uh, get this flow really moving up into the southeastern area. So this is a not ideal setup at all. Unless you're in the, the southern Rockies into the plains and Midwest, this could be ideal, um, but definitely not. We can see that flow right there really set up where we've got this, uh, this kind of motion. 
and we've got a lot of this type of flow as well so it's causing all these storms to kind of fast track through this area which again could be favorable for some but not the majority at all the gfs model uh, we're going to see some of the same here uh, we do see this southern slider type storm is not quite as far north so we don't even get the wintery showers here but it's still taking a northern ish track compared to what we were originally seeing so interesting to see as we move forward with this one we kind of see the same type of stuff we see these rising storms along this jet stream through this area that can lead to thunderstorms and severe weather underneath we see all that type of stuff a snow system there for the midwest and great lakes would not surprise me one bit if it looked exactly this way which i am more doubtful than normal for this time period keep that in mind uh, but we do see that hit the east coast to bring again similarly cooler air but not arctic and we do on this gfs model break away from the southeast ridge look we don't really get that quite as much here and we actually do get some true arctic air but way far out again kicking it further and further and further down the road isn't a good look this model does bring something of a pattern similar to what we were expecting for the 7th 8th and uh, 11th 12th but it brings it on the 15th so again you can kind of see how these things have just been delayed 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 um and typically that's not a good sign as i've mentioned throughout this video but we do get what looks to be a very far south and offshore nor'easter that wants to bring a minor snowfall event here to the lower mid-atlantic um typically i would break this down more but not at hours 366 there's not really anything notable to say about that uh total precipitation along the west again is going to flourish if we do truly see this type of pattern for a long period of time um and then these areas as well along where that jet stream would be rising up would also flourish as far as precipitation moving through these areas underneath dealing with a lot more high pressure and even southeast ridging at time would be significantly slowed down also these areas in the center of the trough uh, would not get a lot of activity as most of it would be moving around that area so that's kind of how i see the the current model projection of the next two weeks total snowfall is going to follow suit we could tell lower areas in the west are seeing snowfall and then higher areas up in the northeast seeing some snowfall although a lot of the time it's too warm for snowfall up there too but we do sneak out a few opportunities that allow us to see some snowfall in some of these areas the gfs model again you get this little glimmer of hope shot in the dark snowstorm there but um if we ignore that which we should we end up seeing a similar picture the west seeing a lot more snowfall a lot further south and then these areas are able to sneak some snowfall opportunities which is pretty typical in these types of patterns you do get these like little opportunities and these are the areas that cash in on those opportunities more frequently than again areas further south because of just climate overall with all that stuff being said i hope you guys have a good new year's I wasn't in today's video my face is not in the video because my hair is too long guys i just look crazy i've been too busy to get a haircut um but i'm gonna get my haircut tomorrow and i will be back on the videos but i feel like it's just a distraction at this point um i'm one of those types of people where i just don't really care typically um i'm not really embarrassed by stuff so it, it's a double-edged sword it makes me able to get through situations much easier but it puts me in situations where i probably uh should be a little bit more embarrassed so we're gonna get that taken care of and i'll be back in the videos but for now it's made it easier to edit and just kind of get through this information as i feel like we're just kind of looking at the raw data together and just kind of uh digesting it together and trying to get a a grasp of the pattern so we can really um get some sort of solid idea moving forward but i just feel so skeptical and so doubtful about so many factors right now that i'm just going with this kind of raw format where we're just kind of breaking it down so let me know what you guys think of this i might do this occasionally especially when there's like a lot of doubt and confusion um and, and just kind of bringing you guys into the process more which i know is what we used to do a lot more but just let me know your preferences on that type of stuff it's extremely helpful Anyway, I've rambled on long enough. Be sure to subscribe, hit that bell icon for daily notifications, like the video if you enjoyed it, and then leave a comment down below again with some of those suggestions and feedback, and I will see you guys in the next video.